Hello, in this video I want to explain the basic idea behind LR scanning regarding compilers. Important thing for this video, this will leave questions. What, is, what does that mean? Um, this video is mainly for comparing LR scanning and LL scanning. The basic idea behind both. If you watch this video, you cannot do LR scanning by yourself. You need the state machine and the analyzing table. I'm not sure how you call it in English. Kaisiki hyo in Japanese. Anyway, so we want to compare both scanning mechanisms and let's start with that. Sorry, that was a German screen. Okay, we have a rule set over here. Should be clear what we do. The big letters are all non-terminal symbols and these are just our rules 1 to 5. Our input is i plus i times i. And what we basically want to do is we want to build this tree. I hope you have seen this tree before. If not, you just should look it up. Not sure what to search for. Okay, I didn't record the last part. Let's repeat myself. Okay, let's just get started. Um, we have LR scanning. So you might think we start from the right because it's LR. But that's not true. We start from the left. We don't care about the name at the moment. Um, this is our pointer, the character that we are looking at. And we're looking at I at the moment. So we check what rule can we apply. We can apply rule number five. A pointer is still here. Okay, what's the next rule? We can apply rule number four. Pointer is still here. Now we can apply rule number two. And I hate writing this stuff over and over again. Okay, pointer is here. Now we basically see there's nothing else to do. So the pointer gets to the next position. And we see we can basically also cannot use any rule here. So we check the next symbol. It's an I. We can use rule number five. Pointer is here. Now we can ru use rule number four. And if you think it's just going like this, then be warned. It's not that easy. Pointer is still here. Okay, now it's starting. This, let's make a, a thunder striking in here. You might think, okay, well, um, E plus T. So we can just use the rule number one. Or even better, we have T, so we can just use rule number two. Although rule number two comes after rule number one, so we should first apply rule number one. Um, I'm sorry for that, but both is wrong. I don't know why I use this kind of voice. Okay, let's stop it. Okay, the point is, you don't understand what's going on in here if you don't draw the state machine or the scanning table. If you draw the state machine, you will easily understand why it's not R2. But you will not understand why it's not rule 1. This is even more complicated. We go into detail. I will explain this in another video. So let's just go with the point that the pointer just goes on. We leave the T as it is and it goes just to the times. Again we see we cannot apply any rule so we go to the next one. Now we're at I and we see I, we can apply rule number four, uh, sorry, rule number five. It's getting pretty late. And now you might think, oh okay we have an F so we can apply rule number four. That's pretty good. But no, once again, wrong. Again we have this problem. We can only see this in the state machine. What actually happens is we group this thing together and end up with E plus T. What do we do? We applied rule number one. Which is of course gloriously wrong. It's just late. We applied rule number three. Sorry for that. Because we have the times here. Now, sorry I have to go up here. By the way, the pointer is now here. And you might think again, oh we can apply this rule. Of course, probably you don't think so at the moment. We will apply rule number one now. And now it's really rule number one, sorry. We end up with an E. And the E tells us we're finished. Why does it tell us? Um, you see the tree over here? It's the E. It's the end of the tree. So everything is fine. And the input is, I'm not sure, is accepted? See, do you say accepted in English? Okay, we have these two points. I said you cannot understand this without the state machine. What did you learn in this video? You learned the following. Um, this is the tree we basically want to build up. And there are two ways of building this tree. I explained this in another video. Um, you can start from the bottom. So let's make an easier to read version. Okay, so you can start from the bottom and go up. So you use this input and try to somehow get to an E. Or you start with an E and try to like change all these things. Like, okay, I can use this rule number one. So E gets E plus T and stuff. And you try to end up with I plus I times I. 
So you end up with the input or you end up with an E, depending on what which way you go. Keep in mind that this is not only, a, uh, how you said, a computerized question. This is also a question on how you want to draw this tree by yourself. You can try to build it from the bottom up with paper and pen, pen and paper. And you can try to build it from the top down. So you have these two ways. And going from up down is LL. And going from bottom up is LR. So LR scanning is bottom up scanning. LL scanning is top down scanning, if you want to see it like that. And this is what we learned in this video. This is the difference if you compare the idea behind LL scanning and LR scanning. And to really do that stuff correctly, to really go up correctly from the top, from the bottom, you need the state machine and you need the scanning table, analyzing table. If you go with LL scanning, you don't need the state machine, but you end up with a lot of try and error. LL scanning is basically the brute force scanning method. Okay, that being said, I hope you understood the stuff that I said in here. If not, just write some comments. Make sure to read the video description. I make updates inside the video description and nothing else to say. So thanks for watching.